What if you could only work with your favorite clients? Well, that's what we're going to talk about today on the Second Opinion Loan Officer podcast, where um, we're mostly talking about content marketing for mortgage professionals. And, uh, you know, the the thing about content marketing, and I talk about this a lot in all of these uh, all these videos, all these episodes, is uh, when you are creating content, we do this to create a steady stream of inbound traffic from consumers that already know, like, and trust us. Now, one of the interesting things about being a content creator is you will attract exactly the kind of borrower that you create content for. Um, it's interesting that way. We're basically, we're like fishermen uh, or fisher people. We are baiting hooks. We're throwing it out there. So depending on what bait we're using and what kind of gear we're using and where we're throwing that uh, throwing that line, those are the people that we are going to attract. So today we were going to talk specifically about attracting the perfect client or the type of client that you love to work with. Um, and we're going to do this under the pretense of demographic niches. We're going to work uh, today. We're going to talk about how to target your content towards uh, demographic niches that uh, are going to attract exactly the types of business, the types of loans, um, and the types of people that you want to work with, quite frankly. So uh, we're basically going to talk about four different uh, categories of demographic niches. Now, this is going to be a little bit of a high level view. We're definitely going to unpack this, but I'm going to do a lot more work on these niches because I think once you sort of identify the niche uh, category that you're creating content in, I think it's just so much easier to visualize what your message is, who your message is for, and what kind of results you're going to get uh, from that. So the four uh, the four demographic uh, niches that we're going to talk about today are employment uh, demographics or employer demographics, life events or economic events as a demographic, uh, generational, uh, generation specific demographics, and then shared interests and hobbies. Um, now, with each one of these categories, I'm going to give you a minimum of three examples uh, for each of these demographics that are actionable examples of uh, demographics that you can unpack um, based off of what I'm giving you. Uh, so let's go ahead and start with employment or employers. Now, employment uh, could just be what line of work they're in. Uh, now I have in here first responders. First responders, so this is really cool. There's niches within niches here. Uh, and what I also want you to recognize here is when I talk about these niches and categorizing niches, types of borrowers, we're categorizing where those, what those borrowers are about. So demographic niches, um, you know, what's their age? Where do they work? This kind of thing. Uh, geographic niches, where are they located? Uh, you know, this is, this is, and there's so much crossover all of all through all of these things. So for instance, first responders, first responders, uh, can be police. It can be fire. Uh, it can be EMT. Uh, it could be um, it could be almost anything uh, first responders that go to an accident, basically. Um, but those shoot that could also um, maybe veterans fits in there. But first responders are really good ones. Um, medical professionals are a good employment. Um, an employer example is, say, for instance, a hospital. So maybe you live next to a really big hospital and you specialize in, uh, let's say, traveling nurses or nurses or doctor loans or something like that. Then you would take uh, your demographic niche of medical professionals and you would also sort of focus on the geographic niche of this specific hospital. So are you a traveling nurse in this hospital, in this city? 
this is then you need to hear this, right? So that's the kind of that's the kind of thing. Um, employers also will cover like unions. Um, so maybe you are in a big union town, uh, and there are uh, and there are big unions that are that are in your town. You can focus just on the needs of people who are members of that union. So those are examples of like employment or employer. Uh, now the reason why you would use an employment or an employer niche uh, is that you have some sort of involvement in that niche in some way. Either uh, you used to work in that profession or you have relatives that work in that profession or you have siblings or a spouse that works in that profession. Um, that Those are how you get to like those people. Uh, you know, a perfect example, uh, David Zai, uh, we did an interview with David Zai uh, a few episodes back, so you can go back and 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 watch that one. But he, what he did is he went after traveling nurses, and he started he started creating content about traveling nurses, uh, mostly because of COVID. And there's a lot of reasons why traveling nurses are a really good niche, uh, mostly because the employment is not steady; they don't work forty hours. Uh, 40 straight hours at one place. They work at multiple how uh, multiple hospitals. They work multiple hours, and that's uh, that's one of the the that's one of the main challenges uh, with why call centers uh, can't tackle uh, any of these employers that we're talking about. First responders are the same way. Uh, they don't always get paid the same. They don't always have the same hours. Uh, they get different stipends and overtime and things like that that make it uh, make it complicated. Uh, now let's look at life events, life events and economic issues. So a life event would be like divorce, right? So divorce is a life event demographic. Divorce Overseas. Um, whether you were the one being divorced or the one divorcing, there's two parties there. So there's actually the opportunity to create content. Now, this one, when you get to divorce, uh, a divorce life event, you can start with the divorce life event, but what you're really going to start to get into is some of your guidelines and your loan program niches. Uh, so your loan program or your loan guideline niches are the guidelines uh, around divorce, right? So if you receive a big settlement in a divorce, uh, can you use that money as down payment? Is it sourced and seasoned? Things like that. Uh, if you receive assets, uh, from your spouse that you didn't previously have, uh, if you weren't employed uh, prior to the divorce and then you got employed, so there was a gap of employment. These are the types of things that are in divorces. Uh, other life events are right sizing. Uh, right sizing is also um, is also another demographic. Uh, a demographic uh, uh, event here, uh, which is like empty nesters. Well, this is also uh, sort of a, um, oh, what is that? What is the, what am I trying to think of? Uh, this is a generational thing too. So right sizing is a specific generation. So that's probably around Gen X now. Uh, they're in their 50s, maybe their early 50s, and the kids are moving out. So that's a life event. Are you an empty nester? Do you need to right size? Do you need to upgrade? Do you need to downsize? Um, right to empty nesters could be uh, older folks. Uh, right sizing could be um, newly uh, newlyweds that are living in a one bedroom. Uh, a one bedroom place and they're having a kid. And so they need a bigger place. Uh, also, um, financial education, uh, financial education is, uh, with a life, uh, with a life event is, um, where was it going with that one? Financial education, divorce, right sizing, empty nest, um, Oh, economic issues. Yeah, economic issues is really just talking about what's going on with the economy and uh, what you should be doing. So should you buy right now or should you not buy right now? Uh, the financial education is the stuff that I'm doing on Find My Way Home. So for instance, right now in this market, because of uh, because of inflation and because of the way that the housing market is, uh, we're creating financial education for first-time buyers because it's a first-time buyer 
uh, market. So yes, that's a life event is being a first time buyer, but also sort of the economic issues around the recession um, and things like that. So that kind of education uh, works for life events and economic issues. Uh, then there's generational specific demographics. So your millennials, your millennials are now um, in their 30s and your millennials are, are your first time homebuyer content. So if you're a millennial, that you come from that place. Hey, as a 30 something year old, uh, this is the process that I had to go through to buy my first house or this is the process that we go through uh, for for uh, for folks that are my age. Uh, but that's your millennial generation is your first time home buyers. Uh, they shop in different ways. They have different lifestyles. Uh, they're getting married at different times than other generations. There's a lot to know about each one of these generations and how to create content to uh, speak directly to them. Um, I highly recommend that you don't um, cross generational niche content is tough. You don't want to be an old, grizzly, gray-haired guy talking about millennials um, buying their first home. You can, absolutely, but if you are a millennial and you're a loan officer and you're a millennial and you want to talk to millennials, speak to your own generation. See, with all of these niches, we are speaking to things that we already can associate with or that we're passionate about or that we're invested in in some some way. That's the great thing about niches. And that's the great thing about creating content. When you create content, it has to be about something that you're passionate about, or you're not going to stick with it. Uh, you're not going to get a ton of viewers right away, but the viewers that you get are going to resonate with you uh like specifically resonate with you, like you're hitting a bullseye on a target. So all of this niche content that we're talking about, this entire uh, niche content series that we're talking about is really you creating content about the things that you have the most experience in, uh, the most interest in, the most knowledge in, and the things that you're most passionate about. And then how do you translate that into a message to attract people that you can have those types of conversations, work with those types of people, and close those types of loans? Let's keep going. So generational specific, your millennials. Yes, if you're a millennial, uh, that is your first time homebuyer demographic. Now, the wave of millennials is one of the biggest generations since the baby boomers. So this is a huge generation of consumers, of first-time homebuyers that are coming into the market. Now they're buying a little bit later in the market, and there's a lot of reasons for that. There was the crash of 08 when these millennials were young. They were very young, and they saw their parents losing homes. Um, also, we had COVID. We had COVID right around the time that they're starting their careers and they're starting their employment. And then they had two years of maybe volatile employment history. Uh, so there's a lot there. There's a lot to unpack there. Uh, Gen X. Uh, Gen X is my generation. We're in our 50s, uh, lower to later 50s maybe. Um, and we've got empty nesters. Our kids are growing up. They're going to college. They're moving out. Uh, we're also at a time in our, in our careers, most likely, that um, we're ready to maybe start investing in some properties. Maybe the kids are gone. Our expenses have gone down a little bit. Uh, we're coming Coming up on retirement, we're thinking about what are we going to be doing uh, in retirement? What kind, Are we going to have enough cash flow re for retirement? And so maybe we're looking at short-term Airbnb rentals or um, maybe buy and hold uh, rentals, long-term rentals uh, that we're looking at uh, to just build as many rental properties as we can. So that's a good, those are good Gen X um, Gen X uh, demographic uh, topics, uh, baby boomer generation uh, specific topics are your reverse mortgages. Your baby boomers are in their 70s now. Um, they're in their early to later 70s and they're um, and it is a huge huge demographic and they are retiring in droves. There are, I don't know what the statistics are, but there is a comma in it of the number of people that are retiring a day um, that are baby boomers. So 
when you retire and when you get up and around, when you start to retire and you start having your retirement plans, um, you're kind of looking at your entire financial situation. So this is, if you're working with baby boomers, this is good for working with financial planners um, and uh, and talking about reverse mortgages, being getting into the reverse mortgage niche, which a reverse mortgage niche is a low loan guideline niche, which is something we're going to talk about uh, in an upcoming episode. Uh, shared interests and hobbies. So shared interests and hobbies can be just about anything. Military and first responders can be an interest or a hobby. Um, it could just be something you're passionate about. Uh, man caves and she sheds, right? Like, so if you have a hobby and like you build these magnificent man caves, um, maybe that's how you approach your business. Hey, it only took me, I refinanced my house. It only took me $15,000 to build this man cave. Um, don't be afraid to work in the things that you're interested in. If you're into underwater basket weaving, then do videos about qualifying for a mortgage if you're an underwater basket weaver. Uh, it's okay. Um, but don't be afraid. And you don't do this with all of your videos, but we're talking about creating niches and we're talking about attracting exactly the people that we want to work with. So don't be afraid afraid to share, to talk about your experience, talk about your interests, talk about your hobbies, talk about the things you're passionate about. Every single video that you do does not have to be a pitch for your business. It's just to, so that people can start to know, like, and trust you. And you're always going to work something in there about what you do for a living. But remember, we're creating content in order to generate business. And what I'm saying is it doesn't have to be all business all the time. It could be, you, this could be mullet content, right? So you can be business in the front, party in the back. Make sure that you're talking about stuff that you're interested in because when you when you expose more of yourself and what your interest and what your passions are, regardless of what it is, whether it's an employer or a generation or an interest, whatever you're passionate about, that passion's going to come out when you create that content and you're going to attract people that share that passion with you. Um, so you're already going to have those things in common. And then the last thing that I want to really leave you with is make sure that you're weaving your why into your videos. So why are these your people? Why do you like working with first responders? Why are you so passionate about helping policemen? Uh, why are you so ha uh, passionate about veterans? Why are you so passionate about man caves, right? Like what, what is it? Why are these people your favorite people? So weave in, su weave in success stories and talk about your why as you're doing your videos. I'm talking to you because of this, because I'm passionate about who you are for these reasons, because we are kindred spirits in this way, that kind of thing. Um, and then, uh, and then you're, you're basically, you're going to tell success stories and then translate guidelines into your niches. So as you're solving problems for these particular people, let them know why this particular guideline uh, is, is important if you are a police officer, then um, the income calculation guidelines are important to police officers for this reason. So if you're a police officer and you just came back from leave, uh, here's three reasons why you don't want to apply for an FHA loan, for instance, right? So maybe uh, the gaps of employment are different for one guideline or another. So weave in your why, translate your guidelines, translate everything and put it through a filter of why these are your favorite people to work with. And that's how you attract the people that you want to work with. All right, folks. So this is the first in my, um, I have five riches and niches episodes that I'm going to do. Uh, we're going to do these sequentially one in a, one in, one in a, uh, in a row. Um, this one was the demographic riches and niches working with your favorite client. Um, the next one coming up is going to be hyper local, uh, geo, uh, uh, geo domination, uh, which is uh, basically your geographics. 
uh, attract the loans you love. Those are guideline uh, niches, cause-based uh, content is advocacy niches, and then leadership and growth content. Now, if, uh, if you are just running into this for the very first time, um, I've created a, uh, a blueprint that talks exactly about why content marketing is the single most effective strategy in today's market. In today's market, it's all about educating and empowering consumers and building as big of a database as you possibly can. Now I have a free blueprint. It's about a 17 page blueprint of exactly how to do that. You can go to mlo.expert. So it's www.mlo, mortgage loan officer, dot expert. When you go there, we're going to invite you to our free second opinion loan officer community. Uh, we're going to give you this download and um, we're going to give you all kinds of tools and resources to be a content creator and to do this 100% yourself. Everything that I do here on these videos in the second opinion loan officer community uh all of this stuff is to design for you to be a, to become to learn how to become a content creator um, completely on your own. If you're not the do-it-yourself type and you're really committed to doing content, but you need a little extra help, we can help with that too. And it's called the Find My Way Home Expert Network, and that's what I do. I'm the founder of FindMyWayHome.com and the founder of the Find My Way Home Expert Network. And what we do is we help you direct, produce publish, promote, capture leads, convert, follow up on those leads, convert those leads and long-term nurture the ones that aren't ready. So if you want to be a member of the network, there are details uh, down in the description. If you download the white paper, we'll also send you some information on the done for you solution. But essentially when you become part of the network, you're going to instantly be introduced to consumers looking for a second opinion that come to findmywayhome.com. Now we get tens of thousands of consumers every single month come to findmywayhome.com looking for a second opinion uh, on uh, for their questions that they have about qualifying for a mortgage. So we're going to make those connections and we're going to introduce those folks to you right now while we're helping you create a library of trust assets that you can push out there so that you can start a consistent stream of consumers that already know, like, and trust you, um, hopefully on one of these demographics, either a, uh, either a, uh, or one of these niches, uh, demographic niche, uh, potentially. So thanks for joining me this time. Uh, we have four more in these niches and these riches or niches videos. And, um, these things are going to be really good. You're going to find there's a lot of overlap. Uh, you're going to use demographic niches and geographic niches and program niches. And these things all kind of fall together. But when we're talking about niches, the reason why there are riches in these niches is because these are very specific issues that consumers are looking for answers for. And because you're solving those problems, uh, it may not be all of the traffic, but the traffic that you get is going to be very high intent, very high trust, and very high converting. So that's it for this episode. We'll see you next time.